Hi weaving friends, welcome to a very messy studio and a very disheveled me. Today I'm doing some prep work for a couple of workshops that I'm doing in a local school next week which is really exciting and it's going to be fantastic but it's a bit of work to get organized so I'm going to take two of my rigid heddle looms and I'm going to take my table loom and my inkle loom and my aim is to have all of those looms warped so that the students can actually try stuff out. I'm going to do my best to get there but seeing as I was warping one of my rigid heddle looms, the larger one, this is my 24 inch 60 centimeter, you'll see it better in a minute. And I've got it on the stand there. I'm definitely taking that one. I was making another video recently. It must have been in the weaving school. And somebody said to me, oh, wow, I've never seen anyone warp the loom that way before. And it made me think, oh, yeah, I don't think I've actually showed this way of warping the loom. So how it came about is when we moved to our new property last year, I didn't have a table space like I used to have at our last place to warp my rigid heddle. So what I would do there is I would clamp it to the dining room table and the dining room and the kitchen were all in one. And then for a long warp, I'd run at the length of the table right all the way to the kitchen bench and I would have my warping peg clamped to that kitchen bench. And the kitchen bench wasn't too much of a height difference from the dining room table, so it wasn't much of a problem. Actually, it was really ideal because I could move the dining room table back and forth if I needed extra length or a little shorter length. But when we came here and I got my own studio, dream come true, um, I found that I didn't really have an appropriate place for warping my rigid heddle anymore. I don't have the dining room table out here. I do have a work table, but it's a different size. And if I want to do a kind of extended warp, then I found that there was really nowhere to clamp my peg to. So um, I thought one day, oh, I'm just going to warp from my stand and I'll clamp it to my table and we'll see how it goes from there. And that's how this warping method came about and I'm going to share it with you today. So a couple of things that you need to sort of have in place for this warping method to work. Well, the first thing is you need to have a stand for your rigid heddle loom, loom. And the floor in my studio is, it's carpet, but it's carpet tiles and they're really quite thin. So it's quite a flat floor but it does have um, that sort of movement. It's not slippery for the stand, but I can kind of easily push this loom back and forth, which is an important aspect of using this method. If you had like a really thick carpet, it might be more difficult. And if you had, um, say, I don't know, wooden floorboards or tiles on your floor, that's gonna change the dynamics a little bit. You can still try it. If you've got a wooden floor, make sure that you're not scratching it and you don't realize that until later because that would be painful. And also, um, I generally like doing this for a longer warp because if I'm going to do a shorter warp, say I'm just doing a sample or something like that, then I will just use the table and go for the shorter length. This length is like sort of an in-between length. It's not long, it's not short. It's around 60 inches of warp that I'm doing here today. So it's not overly long, but it's still long enough that I would need to have somewhere else other than my table to do it. So let's get on with the video and uh, I'll stop yabbing and show you how this actually works. First up, I've got my warping pegs clamped to the table. The table is higher than the loom actually is on the stand, but it's not a problem. There's not a huge amount of height difference, so it's okay. Two pegs because I'm doing a warp of around eight inches and anything around that width and above, I really like to distribute the warp between two pegs. Here is the back of the loom in relation to the pegs. So the pegs are around 60 inches from the back of this loom. I measure from the back apron rod when it's fully extended out with the break on and I measure to um, the warping pegs from there. So that's around 60 inches. That's the warp that I'm doing today. And I have tried to align my warping pegs on this half and one on this half. You can see on my heddle here, I've got my warp width already marked out, so I don't have to worry about that part of the equation. Okay, so I'm not doing anything special with the warp. I'm just warping up my yarns. 
just as I normally would by tying onto the back apron rod, going through my first slot and pulling the loop so that I've got two ends. And then I'm gonna take that to the first warping peg. From there, I'm just continuing to warp through all of my slots between my markers. So it doesn't matter what sort of warp you are doing, you can still do this method. And when I get to the halfway mark, which I've also got marked, then I'm gonna to change to the second peg. So I'm gonna do a little bit of variation in my warp. Um, I'm gonna introduce a little bit of pink into the middle, but however you're doing your warp will be fine. I do wanna show you one more added benefit of this warping method before we actually get to rolling on the warp. One thing about warping from the stand like this is the loom does generally sit a little bit lower than your average table. And so it can be an issue for some people with their back if you're kind of leaning over a lot um, further than you're used to. I know that that can be an issue for me sometimes. So one way around that is if you've got a chair on wheels, and again, this depends on your floor. Your floor has to be fairly flat you can actually warp the loom this way while seated in your chair. It takes a little bit longer, obviously, but for those who have um, really bad back issues and find this kind of warping painful, I think this really helps a lot. So I'm just sitting in my chair and I'm warping through the slot just as usual. And then I can wheel this chair all the way to my warping peg and then make my way back again. So yeah, it takes a little bit longer. Um, and also I imagine that if you are in a wheelchair but you have reasonable use of your hands, that this may be an option for you as well. I don't know, maybe you can tell me if you are in a wheelchair, um, tell me if you have warped in this way. I'd be interested to know. Okay, so just back and forth. Or if you don't need the chair, then just standing and warping that way. Okay, so keep warping in this fashion um, until you've got your whole loom warped. And then I'll show you the next step, which is really what this video is about. Okay, this is tricky to film because just because of the distance, I'm trying to get everything in the shot. So hopefully it will turn out okay and you can see exactly what I'm doing. So my warp is on, tied off at both ends. Um, I've got my two warping pegs and they both have choke ties on them. So I'm leaving them as two separate warps at the moment. And then all I have to do from there is start winding at the back of the loom. So I'm gonna start winding it towards me. And what happens as I do that is, of course the warp starts to come towards me. So I don't wanna wind it so far that I put a heap of tension on this warp and then I have the warping pegs going ping and my yarn going all over the studio. So what I'm doing very gradually, while I'm moving the warp towards me at the back, is I'm pushing the bottom of the stand with my foot just very gradually. And I'm doing it so that enough tension stays on the warp for actually warping, but it's not like a massively tight tension that's gonna cause problems with the warping pegs. So I'm just slowly, slowly pushing with my foot And as long as you don't allow the tension to get too tight, you will just be able to keep moving slowly forward. And this is almost like having a helper because the pegs are holding the warp for you. It's not gonna be as tight a tension as if there's a helper, but the tension is still really good. What I'm gonna do now is insert my separator. I'm using some a roll of thick craft paper. I'm 
insert that at this point, get it lodged in there, and then that's gonna help me as well to maintain this really good tension. Now, I'll just say I am using wool for this warp. If you're using something that's a bit more, more rigid like cotton, you're gonna to have to be even more careful of the tension and having too much tension on the pegs. So just bear that in mind. Now, as I go, I'm gonna be pulling on my separator just to get that tension happening nicely. And I just keep going from there. Just keep on pushing with my foot and slowly winding that back. I'll have a closer look so you can see how nice my warp's looking at the back here. Doesn't that look nice? It's, everything's nice and straight, well tensioned. And I'll just continue. You can see I'm with my hand here, I'm just clicking back little at a time and at the same time pushing with my foot and pulling down on my separator occasionally okay so now you've seen the top i'll give you a look at what my foot does at the bottom Getting closer in now. I need to introduce some more paper. Once that's lodged in, I can then pull on it to tension it and just keep going with that action of pushing with my foot while I wind back at the side. And you can see you can do this right up, right up to the pegs. Soon my loom's gonna get too close to the table and I won't be able to go any further. Um, but that's absolutely fine because it's pretty much at threading distance now. So I can take those off, take my choke ties off, choke tie off that one as well. Lift it off and I can cut those loops, cut the loops on this side and voila, we are ready to thread a beautifully rolled on warp. I hope this video was helpful to you. Perhaps you will give this method a try for yourself and see whether you like it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave me a comment down below if you have any questions or friendly comments. Friendly comments are always welcome. And until next time, happy weaving.